Hey guys, so today we're going to talk about the circulatory system. Now the circulatory system is made up of the heart and all of the blood vessels that carry the blood. Alright, so in this video we're really just going to focus on the heart and then the main functions of the circulatory system. Now you can pause on the next two slides if you want to look over the prefixes that will be included in the vocab. All right, but I'm going to move on to talking about the functions of the circulatory system. The number one function being transport. All right, so it is our main transport system, kind of like a network of highways in the body. And that transport, it's transporting the blood that contains the oxygen and nutrients and hormones that the cells need. It also transports the carbon dioxide and urea and other wastes away from the cells. Now, that's not its only function though. It also helps fight infection because those blood cells of the white blood cells help target pathogens. And it also helps to regulate body temperature by controlling where the blood is flowing in the body. It can help minimize heat loss or maximize heat loss. And the cardiovascular system also helps stabilize the pH and ionic concentrations of body fluids. Now the circulatory system has some main components, right? So the main pump of the system is the heart. Then we've got the blood that is flowing through all of the vessels, and those vessels can be broken down into arteries, veins, and capillaries. All right, moving forward, let's look at the heart. Okay, so the heart is the muscular pump that moves blood throughout the body. It's about the size of your fist, Lays weighs just about like one pound, but it is a powerful organ. It is located in the thoracic cavity, suspended in the pericardial sac. It is composed of four main chambers that we will look at specifically, and you can separate those chambers into the left and right halves, and the whole thing is powered by cardiac muscle cells. So the pericardium is the outer membrane that kind of protects the heart. Okay, so there's a protective sac of connective tissue that produces serous fluid that helps lubricate the heart and prevent friction when those different parts are moving. It is again filled with fluid and these are some diagrams that kind of show how the pericardium surrounds the heart. There are different parts of the pericardium and you are welcome to look at those in your textbook. Um, I'm not going to get into the details right now. Now, beneath the pericardium is the myocardium. Now, myo means muscle. So this is the main part of the heart that is the muscular system, okay? So the outside would be the epicardium, and the pericardium is right beyond that epicardium. The myocardium is all the part with muscle, and then the endocardium actually lines the surface of those inner chambers. The myocardium is by far the thickest layer of the heart's wall, it is super strong, okay, and it is composed of spontaneously contracting muscle fibers. And again, those muscle fibers kind of act like nerves where they conduct electricity, but they're also muscles contracting. Now, the myocardium is supplied with blood from the coronary arteries. Remember, the myocardium needs some blood so that it can have oxygen and nutrients to do um, cellular respiration so that it has enough energy to contract all of those muscles. If we think back to muscle system, we know that we need ATP for those muscle contractions to happen. All right, so when we look at the internal chambers of the heart, we have two receiving chambers, which are receiving blood from outside of the heart, and then we have two discharging chambers, which are pushing the blood out of the heart. And the two that receive blood are called the atria. They're kind of fleshy looking. They're less muscular looking. Um, they're thin walled. They receive blood from veins and they send blood to ventricles. The ventricles are those lower, more muscular receiving chambers that pump the blood out into arteries. Okay, so they receive blood from the atria. They're thick walled because they have lots of muscle to pump the blood out. And there are two of these, right? So there's a right atrium and a right ventricle. And then there's a left atrium and a left ventricle. And the wall of muscle that kind of separates these two halves is called the septum. All right, now 
when we get into the structures of the heart, it's important to note that you don't want the blood flowing, you know, any old way in the heart. You want it to go one direction and for that to be controlled. So there are valves that help the blood move in one direction. It prevents backflow. If there are problems with the valves, then there can be other problems with the heart. And we'll look at some of those um, things that could go wrong later in the week. So valves keep blood moving in one direction. They are between the different chambers. So there's a valve between the right atrium and the right ventricle. There's a valve between the left atrium and the left ventricle. And we will go over the names of those, all right, later. Now, the structures of the heart also include the chordae tendinae, which basically are controlling the movement of those valves. Okay, and you can literally think chords like music chords and then think heart strings like playing on your heart strings. These are cord like tendons. They connect papillary muscles to the valves that control the flow of blood. So if I go back real quick, let's look at those valves. So the two main ones that you should know about between the right atrium and the right ventricle is the tricuspid valve because it has these three little flaps. And then between the left atrium and the left ventricle is the bicuspid valve or the mitral valve. And bicuspid means two. Mitral is another word for like a bishop. And if you think of a bishop's hat, it has two points. There's some weird reason why it's named mitral because of the two points and the bishops and the bicuspid valve, all that stuff. Okay. So moving forward, right? The valves, dun, 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 are like right here. And you can see how it's pointing. This is the tricuspid valve. And here are all of these chordae tendinae, the heart strings. And then here with the um, mitral valve or the bicuspid valve, you also see all of those different tendons. All right, so again, those tendons control the valves, which control the blood moving in one direction only. And the papillary muscles are the muscles that are located right here that connect to the chordae tendinae that connect to the valves. All right, so they anchor the cords in place. Whenever you say papillary, papillae is the root word for a nipple, and it's like in your, it's in so many different things in anatomy, right? So like in your tongue, the papillae in your tongue, it's anything that kind of has that protruding mound shape. So that's why these are called the papillary muscles. They kind of have that rounded shape. All right, we're going to skip this slide, and then we're going to go to, oh gosh, sorry guys, I meant to skip this. Ignore, ignore. Hey, right here. Okay, so we're going to follow the flow of blood through the body, and please follow along with your note sheet. All right, so we're going to start with the superior vena cava, which is right here, number two. We're not going in the order of the numbers. We're going in the order of the flow of blood from the body. Okay, so blood in the inferior vena cava and the superior vena cava, that is the blood that has already been circulated throughout the whole body and it's returning to the heart relatively low oxygenated. Okay, and it meets up and the blood from these veins, inferior vena cava meets up with superior vena cava, the blood flows into this first chamber. And that first chamber is going to be the right atrium. Now, in order to get to the right atrium to the right ventricle, it's going to have to pass through this valve, which is the tricuspid valve. Now, you should know what number seven is based on where it is located on this heart. Keep in mind, if you're looking at your diagram, you're like, but this is the left side. Think about it if you're looking at a person's chest, okay? It would be their right. Does that help? Oh. All right, so number seven would be the right ventricle. Now, this is not labeled in your diagram, but I do want you to label it. It doesn't have a number, but let's label it, okay? So the valve that is right here where the blood is going from the ventricle out towards the lungs is going to be the pulmonary valve. Pulmo means like of the lungs. And here, so basically the blood comes in from the body deoxygenated and the heart pumps it towards the lungs out to the pulmonary trunk and out the pulmonary vein. 
sorry, pulmonary artery, right? It's leaving the heart, so it's an artery. It comes back in through the pulmonary veins, shown here as number four and number 10. Okay, so it's the pulmonary trunk branches into the left pulmonary artery and the right pulmonary artery. Those go to the lungs and the blood gets oxygenated and it flows back into the heart through the pulmonary veins. And this is where it enters the left atrium. The left atrium receives the blood from the lungs. Then it's gonna pass through a valve into the left ventricle. That valve is going to be the mitral valve or the bicuspid valve. Then it flows right into this chamber, which should be the left ventricle. All right, and then it's gotta flow through another valve to exit the body. And because that valve is going towards the aorta, we call that valve the aortic valve. Now, the last thing I wanna note right here is I extended this number 15 to point up to, to the muscle in between the two chambers, and that would be the septum. And remember, after the aortic valve, it passes through, it's going to exit the aorta. Okay, so make sure you've got all these labeled. You can pause it and do it yourself. That is it for the anatomy of the heart. And we are going to look at the actual cardiac cycle and how the heart pumps tomorrow.